this, we got a case of t-shirts for KTG Hat Company. Yay, KTG. Ooh, we got mediums, we got larges, we got extra larges, uh, we got double X's, we got three X's. Oh, this is there. Got one more 4x, lots of 3x's, 2x's, 1x's, larges, and mediums. So, anybody who is interested in getting a KTG t shirt, uh, the prices went down slightly. There's still 20, but shipping is only $10. Uh, went down from 13 to 10, so it's 30 bucks. All you basically have to do is just, you know, PayPal me the money, uh, 30 bucks, and uh, it's 20 plus 10 shipping. And if you're getting multiple hats um, after the first hat, each uh, hat is only a dollar 25 additional for shipping. So you could just email me at the same quadrogong at gmail.com and I'll tell you how much you could uh, PayPal. But that's about it. Uh, I think I'm going to play my sparkly Telecaster today. The one I had made to look like my green and black hat with the black hardware. Yeah. Let's put on the green hat today. All right. Let's turn on the old lava light. Let's get this show on the road. Hey, everybody. Let's talk a little bit more about vintage hats. Now, um, if you're interested in starting to, you know, buy vintage hats, there are certain things you have to look out for. There are certain pitfalls. Um, one big thing is the sweatband. Now, a lot of times you're going to see the leather sweatband dried out. It gets dry. It gets flaky. That's something you might not want to buy um, because it's you're going to have to do something about that. You know, people just can't wear dry, flaky sweatbands. Most of the time, that means that the sweatband has shrunken up and the hat is going to feel tighter anyway. Um, so stay away from that. Other times you get a hat that looks great, but then you get it home and the stitches that are keeping the sweatband on, which are made out of cotton, those rotted away. So there'll be just like a one inch section where it's kind of like, you know, there's no stitches and you think, ah, that's cool. But then when you get home, when you try to flip it open and then everything falls out, the whole sweatband just rots, rots off. Um, most of the time the sweatband can be fine but the stitches rot out that's happened to me before also people don't like to mention that they might not know about it or they know about it and they hide it a lot of times they just show lots of pictures like this like this they show one quick picture you know something like that and they just avoid things um so watch out when stuff is in the dark and the pictures are not clear um a lot of times you can't tell if there's bites on there you, you just can't tell because the resolution isn't good. It's just some far picture from over here and a whole bunch of pictures, different angles. You just can't zoom in on it good enough. Um, you can ask about that. You know, are there bites? Most of these people get back to you really quickly. If they don't, you know, it could be a little fishy anyway. Um, as far as dating stuff, you know, don't worry about that so much. You know, if it's a good vintage hat, nobody really cares if it's 40s, 50s, 60s. Just get it if it's really good, you know. Um, a lot of times when you're starting to look at these Stetsons, you date them from the, um, the tag, the type of the tag. There's a list of, you know, what kind of tags are from what year. Um, that's a good way to date them. With Borsellinos, you're dating them a little bit more from, yeah, the logo inside, but also the, the sticker tag that's underneath the sweatband. There's a sticker in there. So one thing is, yeah, watch out for sweatband action. You're going to have to pay to get your sweatband stitched back on because, you know, it's going to just fall out if you got a little bit of rotted stitches. So check it. Make sure it's firmly attached all the way around. You could ask them. Is the sweatband firmly attached all the way around? Are there any stitches missing from it? Things like that, because that's a very, very common issue. Another common issue is sizing. There wasn't a lot of uh, standardization back then. Often you get sizes and they're too small. 
Uh, one of the reasons is that the leather dehydrates. You know, leather just dries out. Every year it's in some, you know, heated building in the winter and the heat from the radiator just makes it just dry out a little bit more and it just dehydrates another, you know, half a millimeter every couple of years. And then after 50 or 70 years, it's just, you know, a size tighter or whatever. So sometimes the sweatband alone is making the hat tighter. You can tell if the sweatband looks a little ripply and stuff like that. There are a lot of typical things you're going to come across. It's kind of like buying fruit. It's a gamble. You could spend $4 on a pomegranate and it could be horrible, but you could spend like $2 on a pomegranate and it could be the most heavenly pomegranate ever. It's a gamble every time you do it. Um, of course, it's better to ask questions. Sometimes you don't have time to ask questions. You have to just buy something quick because it does disappear quickly. Um, like I said, sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. If you, uh, if you don't get lucky, you can invest some money in it and have things fixed. Like a lot of times I'll see that the sweatband looks intact, but there's one little area where it's not right here. So I don't know if the person's gonna get that thing home reverse the band and then it's going to start to fall off because there's rotten stitches or not um i don't want to even flip the thing open and test it you know so what i do is i just bring it into my guy i have them just totally restitch this and they do it in such a neat way you can't even see anything has been done sometimes when they do it they look at me and they say has anybody restitched this before and i say well, i don't know i bought it used and they'll show me and you know it's been restitched before in a sloppy way so that's another thing to look for um size also is a big thing you're going to find a lot of these hats are way too small you get promised a 7 1 8 and then you get it home and it's a size 7 or a 6 and 7 8 um first of all there's no standardization on those sizes back then and second of all they dehydrate they just all shrink up these things so assume the hat's going to be a little bit smaller than you think Sometimes it's fine, sometimes it's not, but just assume. Um, if you're a size 60 and you see something's a 59, you're like, yeah, I'll just get it because I love it so much, we'll stretch it. Don't do it, it's not gonna work. Because that 59 could be a 59 or it could be a 58. And the inside could be dry and you know, as soon as you stretch it, you're gonna get ripped the bands. The sweatband is gonna rip for sure. Um, and you're going to have to just get a new sweatband, which is, you know, messes up the, the provenance and everything. You know, you, you, yeah, you'll have a cleaner sweatband in there, but, you know, it's not going to say Stetson anymore and be a cool vintage looking hat. People like all that stuff in there, you know, all the old logos and everything. And that's part of what makes it cool. You know, it's antique, you know, the smell of it, you know, the, the old fonts, the old papers that are kind of yellowed and everything. You know, everything about it is cool. Um, so you just don't want to take that stuff out. Um, there are a lot of things that you could find. Uh, the bites, that's one thing I avoid. As soon as I see a bite, um, I'm out of there. Uh, I bought a couple of hats with bites very, very early on because I didn't know. Um, the, the resolution wasn't good and they never mentioned it in the ad. So now, I'm a little bit more picky when I buy stuff and I try to stay away from eBay and Etsy and uh, things like that um, where you can never really see the person or talk to the person and, you know, their name is like Mr. Shades or something and you don't really know what you're going to get. You get what you get and that's it. So, you know, every once in a while I see something that's really cool. I make the rounds on eBay, um, but I, I don't spend too much time there because of that um uh definitely it's good to check out you know goodwill uh garage sales um all of those kind of places yard sales salvation army um marketplace on facebook craigslist in your local area all those things is good to find vintage hats and of course you know you can go to uh, hats and guitars i always have things on my wall here that i've been collecting you know i've basically been selling hats for you know three decades of my life so i've acquired a lot of hats and i have a lot of friends in the business so i get lots and lots of hats they just come and come and come and sometimes that's what i do i you know that's my job i stay up till the crack of dawn searching for things you know i'm like a, every single person that i know i have friends 
that also deal these hats and the two of us will you know share our lists and stuff and help each other out um, I run my stuff by him before I run it by you guys and he runs it by me and um, we do a little bit of dealing we call that montying montying is like uh, let's make a deal like Monty Hall so if you want a Monty we Monty you know so I'll ask my friend you got anything you want a Monty and I'll say yeah let's Monty and he'll uh, you know, you might have a Borsellino, I have a Stetson, sometimes there's nothing we want a Monty, sometimes there is. But um, things like this is cool, like these hand-shaped teardrops, you know, those are really neat, the high crowns. Um, but, um, you know, just beware, don't buy things that are too small, like ever, just, just don't do it. Um, you can't stretch these things, no, the answer is no, you can't stretch them at all, really. Um, it's just not really doable. One thing you can do is you can have the sweatband removed, put the thing on a, you know, like a real stretcher. Uh, you know, they heat this up, they crank it open with the sweatband off, they make the actual felt hat bigger, okay? What happens is the brim gets a tiny bit smaller, but the hole here gets bigger. So I'll turn this from a 7 one eighth to a 7 and 3 eighths. You'll lose some brim size in the process. And then what they do is after that, then they put the sweatband in. Uh, what I recommend doing is putting a, uh, a cloth sweat, not a cloth, a ribbon sweatband in, which is way thinner than a regular leather sweatband. You have them stretch it and um, put in a cloth sweatband. I can even do that for you. I can have it done, but you know, it costs a little money. Um, Sometimes that's the best thing to do. Or just pull the sweatband out completely. And then, uh, you know, you could just put in something later on. A ribbon sweatband will be good. But, um, yeah, you can't buy these things and just intend to stretch them and wear them. As much as you want something, you see the best hat in the world. You're like, oh, yeah. It's a gray whippet from 1940, whatever. And it's an amazing hat. And instead of being 1500 bucks, it's only 80 bucks. But it's two sizes too small for me. I gotta get it anyway. I gotta get it anyway. And you get it, and it just—it's this huge problem. You can't do anything with it. Um, again, if you wanted to make this hole that big, okay, that's a huge job with physics. You just can't do it. You know, the whole hat is going to be so distorted that it'll look like just a bunch of, you know, poop, and poop. So. Um, what you need to do is really stretch the hat properly, professionally, and lose some brim, gain some size, hopefully put in a ribbon sweatband. This is a good trick. I can tell you somebody who could do it for you if you'd like. Um, but yeah, don't buy your hat small. Just don't do it. If you got to buy them big, buy them big. Go for it. If you can find something big, just get it big. Don't worry about it. And size it down if you have to. Um, Cat Benu makes three different pads. They make a regular pad. They make a padded one. And then they make a terry cloth one, which is super thick. So you could reduce the size a half size, you know, a whole size, a size and a half, or two sizes, as much as you want with pads. But, um... You can't stretch hats. You just can't do it. You know, I have all the, the the stuff here to do it, the materials, and I just wouldn't do it to hats like this. It's just, you can't do it, you know. You want to take something that's beautiful, like, you know, like a 1957 Les Paul and spray paint it black because you're a heavy metal guy. Um, it's just like, you're, you're just taking something that's, you know, old and original and that so many people kept it perfect and, and safe and clean for so many decades and you're just basically you know breaking it and ruining it um i could say yeah you know you want to wear it okay but just do it the right way just don't crank the thing open with a hat jack or you have to do it professionally and the right way um you treat the hat like a piece of felt like a felt body and you disassemble it you take off everything you stretch the felt so it's big enough for your size okay and then you put the sweatband back in. Hopefully a thinner one is always a good deal. But um, that's how it's done. But anyway, these are great. These are these old vintage hats because you could do these cool old Bogart shapings and stuff and you don't even need the bubble in the middle because they're so high crown. This is a seven and one eighth. 
It's a 1950s uh, Stetson open road. And it's got one or two slight little problems in the inside. It's not really a tear in the leather. It's like kind of like a sort of like a crack in the finish, but it doesn't really go all the way through. But the leather itself is really soft on the inside and really uh, clean, clean, clean. The only thing really with it right now is a couple of wrinkles here, which I am not steaming yet um, because I, I think I want to steam this one on camera before I send it out. So, blue vintage tips, guys. Be careful out there. Peace. This is my Presley Customs, California Customs. They make hardtail strats, tellies to your uh, to your specs. Action is super low. Really good, good level frets. Super slinky, quick playing. Uh, black hardware, black everything is you know to match my hat. So uh, yeah, heads up to Seth at. Uh, Presley, that's with two S's, Presley California Customs, also known as California Hardtails, killer instruments. Look at these finishes. They have a finish called Champagne Sparkle, which is amazing. That's the next one I'm getting. Take a look at this HH Strat he's got for sale on Reverb. I came very close to getting this one too, but I thought the green and black was more appropriate for me. Uh, this is probably going to be the next color I get from him. Either an uh, HH Strat or an HH Telly. Definitely doing a champagne from him next though. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah.